Hey guys, this is John from Walton's and this is Meat Gistics University Meat Process Equipment 302 Knife Sharpeners. So when you're using knife sharpeners, you have a lot of different options. You've got things like the IM200, you've obviously got the True Hone, there's the Nairi, there's Steels, but first let's talk about knives. So each knife is gonna perform a different task in both the kitchen and the processing floor. Now, when we're cutting through lots of bone or heavy cartilage, we need a thicker blade. A thin blade, like something on a boning knife, is going to get bent or it's gonna fold while you're trying to cut through that. A thicker blade will be better for that purpose, but with a thicker blade, it will be less sharp. Basically, they're mutually exclusive to a degree. Now, a sharper knife will be less durable and a thicker edge will be more durable, but less sharp. Now, before we go any further, we do need to talk about the numbers on the degrees we're about to give. Now, almost any knife you're gonna be using for what we're talking about will be double beveled, meaning it's gonna have a cutting edge on both sides. So when I say 16 degrees, am I talking about an eight on each side or am I talking about a 16 on each side? Now, we generally mean that it will be a 16 degree angle on one edge, and that would make the cumulative angle a 32, but we're only giving you the numbers for one edge. So with that in mind, when we're looking at these angles, what are we looking for for specific knives? For something like a cleaver and a machete, we want a nice thick angle as it needs to be durable and good for chopping. Now we've tried to put an edge on this similar to a fillet knife and there would be no good, it would chip right away. So that's about 30 to 35 degrees is what we're looking for. Now for something like a hunting knife, a scuba knife, something like that, we're looking for 25 to 30. Now these need to be sharp enough to make some good cuts, but also be very durable. You want them to stand up to at least a weekend of hard use. Hence the edge is somewhere between a kitchen knife and a machete. We want it to be able to do a little bit of both. Now an easy mistake to make with your pocket knife is trying to get it down to a razor sharpness. These blades need to be durable as well as sharp. That's why we're going for about that range. Now, right in here, somewhere is probably what we would call the best match of sharpness and durability. The total cumulative angle of 40 tends to be the number a lot of manufacturers use when creating a knife that will be used for both chopping and slicing. Now, something like a chef's or kitchen knife, we're looking between 17 and 25 degrees. Now, these are the knives that probably do the most of straddling two worlds. Your classic home chef's knife is gonna get used for all sorts of jobs in the kitchen, hence why it's often called a kitchen knife. Now, people will use it for separating ribs and cutting cooked chicken into small strips for a salad. I've also seen people debone pork butts with these knives, though I wouldn't recommend it. Now, for boning knives, you want it to be somewhere in the 12 to 17 range. These knives really need to be babied in a certain sense. I have boning in this range, but really 15 to 17 is where they should live. A boning blade with a 12 degree angle, it's gonna fold or create a burr every time you hit a bone. Now the sushi knives are often knives that are never gonna touch a cutting surface. That's how we can have a big hefty looking blade with almost razor sharpness. Filet and paring knives are also in this category. Now from seven to 12, we're talking about a straight razor. We shouldn't have too much use for these in the kitchen really, but just to give you a reference on how close some fillet knives are to an actual razor or an X-Acto. Now, let's talk about some sharpening systems. First, we've got this simple handheld, this is the Swiss Sharp from Swiss Army. And as you can see, it's a simple handheld. It's got a nice protector for our hands and it has two carbide blades in here that form a V. To sharpen your knife, all you do is place your knife down in the middle, give it some pressure, pull along, and you could probably hear what that's doing. The downside to this is that it is terrible for your knives. I do not recommend you do these with really good knives. It eats away at the edge really, really fast. The advantage is that it takes a really dull knife and gets it back to really sharp really quickly. So if you have knives that you're not terribly concerned about, this is a good way to get quickly sharpened edges. I would still recommend that you use some form of steel after that, just to hone it a little bit. The next thing we have is a diamond sharpening steel. 
So most steels are just designed to take a folded edge and press it back to center. So you can take a somewhat dulled knife and get it back to sharp with a regular steel. This is a diamond steel and it does have some rough texture to it. Anytime we're creating an edge, taking a dull knife and making it sharp again, we have to remove material from the knife. There is no way around that. To use this, simply use it as you would any other steel. Get the angle that you want with your knife and just swipe it down and repeat on the other side. Now, to take a really dull blade and get it sharp with this is going to take considerable amount of work. I would still recommend this being a touch up just to have around if you're doing large jobs can be done, but you're gonna be sitting there for a long time if you're trying to take a very dull blade and get it back to sharp with this. Now here's a system that is coming back in popularity a little bit due to some upgrades they've made. This is what's called a Lansky system. This is the original Lansky. What you have here is just a little stand to hold your blade in. And then we've got different holes that will give us different angles on our blade. So we have a 17 degree, a 20, a 25, and a 30. To make it work, you simply attach your stone to these little Allen wrench shaped things that they give you, select which angle you want, address the blade with your stone, and you'll get a perfect angle the entire way through. Now, some people like to do one strong pass and some people do multiple passes. The problem with doing multiple passes is you want to avoid creating any type of divot in your stone. So one smooth pass seems to be work or work best for this. These were kind of cutting edge in the 80s, even early 90s, um, because it was a great way for somebody to be able to take a dull knife and get a really sharp edge on it without having to learn how to use a stone. They've made some upgrades, like I said, making it a little bit more user friendly, but in my opinion, still has some issues. Now next we have the IM200 Norton stone. There are other stones that are all fairly similar. I was using a diamond edge stone a while ago and absolutely fell in love with it. Graduated to this IM200. It has three different stones all in this one container. It's got a coarse, a medium. The fine is Arkansas stone and it is really soft, making it really good for finishing up a blade. Now, to sharpen a knife on this, you'd start with the course, address your knife at whatever angle you want. Remember, this is a boning knife, so we want to be somewhere in the 15-ish range. I mean, if you get it a little bit thinner than that, it's not gonna be too bad, but you don't wanna, you know, don't address it with it all the way flat. You want some angle to it. So you'll start with your heel pressed up against the back edge of the stone. Then once you've found your angle, You'll simply pull it through, paying attention to keeping that same angle the entire way. You don't want to get it where part of the knife has a 12 degree and part of it has a 15. Make a couple of passes and you can hear it working as it goes. Now this does take a little bit of practice to get good with, but the upside to it is it is super soothing. It's really, really nice to take a dull blade, work on it with this for a while and get it back to razor sharpness. It is almost zen-like. Now, great for boning knives, great for chef's knives, your survival knives, no problem. When we start getting into cleavers, this gets a little bit tricky. Finding that angle with a three pound cleaver like this Dow Strong Obliterator is gonna be really hard. One of the recommendations I had heard from J. Michael Kaminsky was to try moving the stone and leaving the cleaver there because the stone weighs less than the cleaver. So it's simpler to keep that at an angle than it is when trying to move this. I tried that. I looked absolutely ridiculous. I could not make it work. So what am I gonna do there? How am I gonna get this to sharp? The true home. Now this thing, in our opinion, is sort of the Cadillac of knife sharpeners. As you can see, it looks like something made in the 80s, probably because it was made in the 80s or 70s, but when you hit a home run with something, you don't need to make too many changes to it. 
This is just a belt driven stone system. So it has four stones on the downside edge of it that spin at high rates. We've got a adjuster right here that we can change the bevel on. It's got 10 different bevel adjustments. For something like a cleaver, we're gonna wanna go to a four bevel. And what that is, is we want those stones overlapping less on a cleaver because we wanna make that blunt edge than we would on something like a boning knife where we want it to be really steep edges. So we back this off to a four. We go through our regular process on this, which is really simple. The instructions are printed on this. The true hone is expensive, but what it does is it allows you to take an employee who has no experience and instead of trying to get them to spend the weeks or months or whatever, getting really proficient at a stone, they can be putting professional edges on knives in just mere minutes. This thing is an absolute amazing system. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about is just a simple leather strop. This is something I've just recently started using and finding I really like it as well. Similar to the stone system, it really does a nice almost zen feeling to it. Uh, so it's just a piece of leather you're usually gonna to wanna to attach it to some sort of hard surface like a piece of wood, anything like that. Now to find the angle you want, what you're gonna do is address the knife with the blade pointing forward, keep it fairly flat, start lightly pushing it forward, and just slowly raise it up, increase the angle. As soon as you feel it catch, you know that's your angle. Then what you're gonna do is find that same angle and just pull it back on it. You wanna put really, really light pressure on this. We do not wanna be pressing down hard. We're just slowly pulling it. Now you might see some people who do this with their straight edge razors and they'll fly with it, move real, real fast. But I'm more concentrating on just trying to keep that angle right and the whole motion smooth throughout. So we've got, a really nice, sharp, and honed knife here. I've said it a lot, but sharp knives, good knives, do make you wanna do more in the kitchen, more cooking, more processing. It's fun to have sharp knives. It's fun to have cool statement knives like this. Um, the one thing we say a lot is sharp knives do not cause accidents in the kitchen and the processing floor. Dull knives do, because you're putting too much pressure, you're trying too hard to make that cut, where a sharp knife would go right through it. As always, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and visit waltonsinc.com and meatjustics.com to find everything but the meat. Thanks for watching. I'm John with Meatjustics University, and I'll see you guys next time. Subscribe to Walton's YouTube channel to check out more amazing videos. Shop at waltonsinc.com to find everything but the meat. Or watch more Hamptic videos by clicking here, or by clicking here.